What is going on everybody? Welcome back. So if you know or if you are the person who carries the tactical world around with them in your cargo pockets, definitely let me know in the comments down below because today we are going to talk about my EDC update. For those of you who don't know what that means, you're here for the first time, it's the everyday carry. That's stuff that we just carry with us on a daily basis. Everything from a pen to a range hammer to a bag, anything that you do, and it differs for everybody there are people out there that are like the swag monkeys they carry everything in the world on their person or in a bag with them i tend to go for what is comfortable and what i feel that i need and kind of find that happy median and some of you may be asking why an update well things change and there are several different reasons for why things would change maybe something new came out maybe something cheaper and better came out or maybe a change for your personal life happened like a job where you live where you work all those things can change what you carry around with you on a daily basis. Now, a couple quick things before we get into everything is one, not all of the things we're going to talk about today are on my person at the same time, because I do carry an urban discreet bag from DDT. It is this one right here, which I've done a review on. And I carry that because it not only doubles as my EDC bag, but it's my gym bag as well. And then of course, like I said, there is a rotation that could be everything from weather, clothing style, your destination, your location, all of that stuff comes into play. Because if you live in states like Maryland, Washington, D.C., places like that, where it's very easy to cross a state line, you need to be very cognizant about what you are carrying on your person because what's legal 50 feet this way may not be legal 50 feet that way. Well, we're going to go ahead and talk about everything from stuff like the lights right here, just a nice carry light, and of course, the sticky stabby items like this new Kaiser blade right there. And of course, what everybody wants to see, what is going to be the new range hammer? But before we talk about what my new rig is going to be, we got to talk about what I have actually carried around with me throughout my life. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but here's a couple of examples. The MMP 2.0 Compact, the Glock 30, because sometimes fat and slow just does the job. The basic Glock 19, well, it's compensated. Not so basic. The Glock 43. The Glock 43 MOS with that new TLR7A sub, still testing that one out. The Hellcat PDP, kind of crazy. The CZ P10C optics ready. That sexy gray Gen 5 19. The FN 509 tactical in gray, which is an absolute beast out there on the range. And of course the Gen 5 45 MOS, which is one of my favorite carry rigs. Now that you've seen that I have carried a few things around over the past several years, and that's like I said, not an exhaustive list, Let's take a good up close look at some of the items in the bag. Not going to be a full review on that. And then what I am actually carrying now, because it's a fairly big change for me as compared to what you've seen so far. Now, if you like what's going on here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn those bell notification icons on. If you're digging anything, give this video a thumbs up. Huge shout out to my Patreons out there. One, been awesome live stream with you guys and talking to you all in person. And you guys make this video specifically here possible. Well, let's go ahead and get into this. Check a few items in that bag out. Check out what my new carry item is. Let me know in the comments if you are missing something or if I am missing something because everybody carries a different way. Okay, not a review on the bag. We're going to talk about a couple of quick things here. So you got a multiple pockets out here. You got a smaller outside pocket here for quick grab items like my CRKT Eaton tool, which trust me, if you've ever forgot your silverware comes in handy. You've got another pocket in here with a clasp for your keys, which is where you can keep all kinds of different stuff like your flashlights, your pens, uh, anything you want in there. Got an upper pocket right here, which is where I keep med supplies, chewing gum. You see, I got a rat's tourniquet in there. Advil, basic stuff that you wanna grab quickly if you should ever need something for medical gear. Now, as far as the side pocket right here, your main pocket is going to be all that high-vis res our high res visible kind of stuff so you can pick things out quickly. Like I said, this, this doubles as a gym bag for me. So I've got some gym equipment in here. I have some food, some nutrient survival stuff, just in case I forget food. Some of their kind of long stay cookies for energy. If I'm, you know, just lacking food or forgot my wallet or something, at least I'll have food with me. And then of course, uh, I've got my pop off leather notebook and some pens. Um, that is that. We're not gonna do a full review on that. I will talk about some of the items in the bag. And then this back pocket here is where you can store either your carrier rig for the day or a hydration bladder. So I'm gonna head and ditch the bag and we'll talk about some of the stuff that I'm carrying and of course get into what I am carrying for a new pistol. All right, so you see I got kind of two groups here and then some stuff that will definitely cross over between stuff that's in the bag and stuff that could be in my hand or on my person. 
So we'll go ahead and talk about the stuff that is in the bag with me normally, kind of in those pockets quickly. First thing is gonna be obviously the RAS tourniquet. You can see I do have some gloves wrapped up in it. It's not everybody's favorite. It's a solid setup. It will work and you're able to wrap your gloves in there and keep it. It's a solid item. It's not too expensive and it comes in handy in a pinch for multiple different reasons. So the next thing is gonna be my Gerber. Now this is the suspension multi-tool. I have Leatherman's, I have Gerber's. This is just one that I've used uh, several times. It's a solid setup. It doesn't break the bank. Goes around with me everywhere in that bag. The CRKT Eaton tool is just a handy thing to have with you because it's got a couple of different tools out of a bottle opener, a spork, yep, a spork, a spoon fork combo. Comes with a little carabiner like that so you can hang it from the inside of your bag if you want. But I have had to use that multiple times because I have forgotten silverware or because I ended up cooking something like this nutrient survival stuff. I've been trying this out for the past month or so, and I've got to say it's actually pretty good for what it is. Um, or they've got these big tin cans of the pre-made cookies you can get, which are pretty delicious for a long-term storage food item. I'm also going to be carrying generally a bigger light, kind of like this. This is the Enforce handheld. It's not a bad light. It's got a couple of different settings on it, and then you can disconnect uh, the tail cap so it doesn't work at all. It won't go off in your bag. But it is a good setup should you need a light with a little bit more power than something that's maybe your phone or on a keychain or something like this. This little stream light uh, has been one of my favorite lights out there, the micro stream. So it's USB rechargeable and you can just plug it into anything pretty much, get it recharged and it gives a really good amount of light and it's a pocket clip if you wanna carry something like that in your pocket. Now I'm generally gonna be wearing a couple different sets of either Smith or Oakley glasses out there. Um, I've got two different sets. This is one that I wear pretty much anytime I'm out doing stuff around the town because it's in my, uh, in my bag. In fact, you can see sunblock on there from the last time I was wearing them. They're good glasses. I use the ones with the chroma pop lenses because those seem to be very, very nice and they're shatter resistant, all the good stuff, UV protectant that you would be looking for. Let's go ahead and move some of that stuff aside. And let's talk about what's going to be on my person. It's just going to be my phone. So I run Samsung phones. Uh, they don't take as nice pictures as the uh, iPhones, I guess you could say, but I don't take a lot of pictures with my phone because I have a camera. I put it in one of those Unicorn Beetle sub cases because those things are like 20 to 25 bucks. They last a very long time. They have been extremely durable. And if you go through one a year, who cares? They come with a little clip. Stuff is all good there. Talk about the keys here. I always put these little kind of neoprene rubberized coatings over my $500 uh, key fobs and there's a reason I know that these key fobs are $500 because I broke one uh, So they're expensive. That's why I put these silicone covers over them So another light I always have this little O light right here on my keychain. It's the uh, one R EOS I think it is. Yeah, the one R EOS. It's been a great light again. It's USB rechargeable You can see it's got a lot of wear on it uh, Checking your mail something like that or just walking uh, walking up to your front door It is a great little light source if you need to see your keys all right, let's talk about the wallet right here. So this is the Popov leather or Popov leather five card wallet. Uh, great stuff here, all hand stitched. This is that, uh, it's USA sourced uh, derby high grain leather. It is very, very nice. It's not too thick. I hate thick wallets. So you can see this thing is just perfect if you're looking for a minimal wallet, but you don't want to buy a wallet every year. This is a couple years old and it's going to last years and years and it just gets a little bit more aged, kind of has those nice nicks in it, looks good. You can treat it with saddle soap, whatever you want. On that same note, I always carry around my uh, notebooks here and it is from Popov Leather as well. I just love these things because I like to write things down because I just don't remember stuff if I type it in my phone or if I try to go off my memory. I wanna write as many things down as possible so I can always refer to them. It fits your typical uh, I think it's the Loesch term, the 1920 or 1919 Loesch term size things. You can get them in different sizes if you want to carry field note size. I dig the big one because I write a lot of stuff down. I've tried all the cool pens, you know, your $30, $40 pens in the world, and I just keep going back to these bad boys right here. These zebra pens are awesome. You can buy 10 of them at a time. They don't break the bank. And if you lose it, who cares? You move on to the next one. All right, let's talk about the blade right here. These bad boys right here. I love these Kaiser blades. I love that whole, you know, 
setup of the blade, the look of it, the whole cleaver look. Not huge in the carbon fiber thing. I just happened to be able to get this one. Um, I do like it, but it's a little bit kind of shiny um, as compared to some of the other options that they have, but it is a great 180 or one, is it 154 CM steel. It's tough stuff. It's got the nice little kind of laser engraving on it right there. You can see, I know it's a little shiny. Good pocket clip on there if you're into the looks. It's got a nice little uh, coloration around the bearing right there. Very, very easy action on this thing. And they've got several different sizes. So this is the Sheepdog, the regular. They've got a mini and they've got an XL. This is just a great little knife to carry around with you. Looks good, feels good in the hand, but it does not, again, break the bank. So that's been in my rotation for a while. A couple of other things that are in my rotation that I have carried around are going to be as I grab them because they're off to the side here. Um, I generally had kind of that real avid tool. It's either I've got one in my truck. I used to carry it in my bag, but I found that I just never pulled it out of my bag. I was always pulling it out of my truck, so I leave it there. And then this little CRKT M16, this is the 10, yeah, the 10Z. Um, it's just a solid little knife. I've used it for a while. It's not the best steel in it. Uh, it has a little relock right there, so you're not gonna close it on yourself on accident. Some serrations on there, you know, you can flip it out however you want, but it's a liner lock blade. It's solid, it's nice and small, and I just don't find myself using big, massive blades out there. Well, okay, let's talk about the Second Amendment stuff, but I'm gonna clear all this stuff out so you can get a good look at it. So this might be a little bit of a surprise to some of you, but we're gonna talk about the 43X MOS first. I'm gonna leave that out because we're gonna talk about that. So the TLR7A sub just dropped. I'm still testing it. I have not carried it a whole lot yet because there aren't really any holsters that I know of yet. So I've been testing it out on the range, taking it with me. So the 43X, the MOS version, is an absolutely great carry, um, especially with the 15 round shield arms mags. You get 15 plus one in a very small package that's still very, very good in the hand. It's not so small that your pinky's flying off of it. It's just a great size to carry between the thickness of it and the overall size. I've been carrying the Swamp Fox Sentinel on there. I've had very good luck with this. No problems with it. The refresh rate on the LED is not the best, but it has been just a great overall carry. I did just test out that Johnny Glock's custom trigger in there. If you've not seen that video, that dude is a genius. I will leave that linked down below. Maybe not something everybody's gonna be comfortable carrying, but that thing is absolutely awesome. It's a solid setup. It's running just fine. I've got several hundred rounds for this thing at this point, and I really enjoy the 43X series, even the 43, because hot weather in Arizona, you get to carry something very minimal. All right, let's talk about this stuff right here and we'll take the holster first. Gerber makes great stuff, I love them. Code TC10 if you're interested. They are backed up a little bit, we'll talk more about that later, but they make an extremely nice holster in uh, several different variations with a lot of options. All right, so, that's right, the P320 in the carry slide length with the Polymer 80 grip module on it and the TLR7A. It is an absolutely great package. Haven't had any issues with this. I do, uh, I do like the Romeo 1 Pro Optic. It's a little banged up. I don't treat it like it's gonna be fragile or break. Uh, that steel shroud has taken a couple falls at this point. It's remained zeroed, it's been Solid. There are several different reasons why I have swapped to this recently as a main carry setup. Although, like I said, I do still carry the 43X MOS, even the 43 quite a bit. Um, but it's just a nice setup, very clean. I love the Polymer 80 grip. The texture on it is absolutely awesome. Really, really good, but not over textured to the point where it's gonna rub you raw should you be wearing it inside the waistband. Uh, this is the Polymer 80 Magwell. I don't know if they have those in stock, but I get questions about that a ton. Um, but everything else in the fire control unit is stock, and it came stock with the SIG X-Ray Night Sights that you can see right there, which are suppressor heights, so you can still get a good view through that window should your dot go down, your battery die. And speaking of that, uh, it is the smaller dot right there. That is the 3.5 MOA dot, or the 3 MOA. Uh, solid setup. I dig it. Big viewable window. Doesn't cause a lot of distortion. 
So let's talk about a couple of these things a little bit more. Of course, the 21 round backup fun stick and why I have added the P320 in the carry size into my rotation. All right, so now you've had a good chance to see kind of what I carry either on my bag or on my person here, which may be a lot for some of you or maybe a lot more than some of you. Definitely let me know in the comments down below. Now, as far as all that basic stuff goes from lights to knives to that CRKT eating tool, any of that stuff or that nutrient survival food, that are all items that are completely up to you. You can carry as much or as little as you want. Like I said, there are some people out there that are like the tactical yard sale. They carry everything they can find either in a bag or in their truck or on their person. I carry what's comfortable because if you're not comfortable, you're probably not gonna end up carrying items that you should. Well, if you're interested in any of that stuff we've talked about so far, I will leave some links down below for you. Let's talk about that DDT Urban Discreet bag first. That's just been an absolutely great bag. It's comfortable, looks discreet, as long as you don't overload it. If you go putting a ton of weight in a sling bag, it's not going to be comfortable at all. But it does have good storage space. It's got several different pockets where you can kind of organize your setups, be in the mesh pockets, the interior pockets. It's got that high-vis backer so you can quickly see items. And then of course that furthest back pocket is either going to be for a hydration bladder or whatever pistol you decide to carry for the day. Now, as far as my chosen knife, I just love this little Kaiser. I really love the look of these blades. They've turned out to be really good quality and they're just solid. Not huge into probably the carbon fiber. I might not go with that look again because they do have several different variations of it. As far as my wallet and the notepad and all that stuff, that pop-off leather stuff is absolutely amazing. Good stuff. And I think I still have a coupon code for that. I'll leave that link down below for you to check out. And of course that stream light right there. So that has been my chosen light for a long time in several different variations because they are a great mix of price, performance, and durability. They come in cheaper than the Surefires and some other lights, but they are extremely durable and will last you years as long as you don't like throw them out of a truck or something. Now, as far as that Enforce goes, I'm still testing those lights out. They've had some success with some lights and they've not had success with other lights. You just do an internet search, you can kind of find out which ones are okay and which ones might not be the best. And then everything else nerf from that Gerber multi-tool to that nutrient survival food, which is actually very tasty for kind of a more long-term storage food. That is all personal preference, so that is up to you. But if you've never been stuck anywhere without food, it's definitely a good idea to have some things like you, especially those little cookies, because they're actually pretty good for like a long-term storage cookie. I'll leave a link for that stuff down below as well. And then of course, what everyone's been waiting for, the rig right here. So. If you watch the channel for any amount of time, you know I'm a huge fan of the Gerber holsters. They make an extremely high quality holster, very, very nice. I've never seen a single problem with them. Everyone I know that's gotten one or people that have gotten one in the comments says that they absolutely love it. The problem is that company grew so fast, they could not keep up. He is still, I wanna say like 60 to 90 days out, which is kind of a kick in the pants. But if you think about what's been going on in 2020 and 2021, it is very tough for manufacturers to keep up with what is going on. I'll leave a link for stuff down below. I think I still have a coupon code of TC10 for that. So the SIG, the P320 carry. This bad boy right here with that polymer 80 frame and that TLR7A with the high switch. This is just one that I like and there's really three reasons of why I went with this. And that is gonna be fit, feel, and accuracy. So let's talk about accuracy first. Now that I've had these for a while, my accuracy and speed with the SIG is where it has been with my Glock, which is what I have the most time in. But I am far more accurate with the SIG P320. Now, some of you may find that as a surprise because I have not always been a SIG fan. And I've often been quoted as saying, my old boss used to say, SIG makes a great $500 gun for 800 bucks. Now, the way that I have outfitted this one with that P80 grip, one, I love gray. Some of you people know that, some of you don't. But that Polymer 80 grip has an amazing texture, great angles. It's just a solid setup, so I really like the way it is. The only thing you might have to worry about over time is the magazine release is going to wear because it is polymer, and you're working that against a metal magazine. So that is something to pay attention to. Now, as far as the Romeo One Pro optics, I've not had any problems with it. I don't treat it like it's a feather. So it has been banged around, it's fallen off the tailgate of the truck out there on the range, not my fault, the camera guy dumped it over, but things happen, it's still working, it has held zero and I have not had any issues with it. Although I would not carry it without that metal protective shield. Um, as far as everything else goes on here, it's just been an absolutely great setup. 
Uh, there are plenty of aftermarket parts if that is your thing, but this is about how I carry this. And it's easy to swap from grip to grip because the fire control unit comes out, drop it into a new grip like the Wilson or the P80, and you are rocking and rolling with a grip of your choice. And of course, you should have noticed that big old 21 round Pez dispenser right there as the backup. Love those factory 21 round mags. They are absolutely awesome. But that's not what I carry all the time. A lot of times I'm actually carrying this now just without the light because it's brand new. So the 43X MOS has become one of my favorite carries, especially with the Shield Arms mags. I get a 15 plus one capacity in something that is very small, very slim. It's compact. The Swamp Fox Sentinel optic has turned out to be pretty good. It's just something I can carry out there when I'm in shorts and a tank top or a t-shirt because we are moving into the warmer months here in Arizona and it gets to 115 to 120 on a daily basis out here for long periods of time. You may not wanna carry a big appendage rig like that when you can get away with carrying something like this. Now, as far as the light goes and the holsters for this exact setup, I don't know of anybody making holsters for the TLR A7 sub on the 43X right now because they just dropped and I'm sure that will be coming out very soon. Now, I know that is a ton of stuff, but I've carried a lot of different things and that's just kind of what I narrowed it down to. Now, this is by, like I said, no means an exhaustive list of what you can carry or what you could carry. This is just what I've found to be the most useful and stuff that I carry all the time to include a little bit of that medical gear. That rat's tourniquet may not be everyone's favorite, but it's compact, it fits, I've got my gloves wrapped up in there and it's just easy to get around with. And all that stuff comes down to what you're comfortable carrying, what is comfortable to actually carry on you, and then does your bag follow you around everywhere you go or is it in a locked structure where nobody else can gain access to it if you've left something in there that you don't want anyone else getting their hands on. Well, that's what I have for you guys today. I hope you like learning about the EDC stuff that I carry around with me. I'll leave links for pretty much all that stuff that I can down below. If not, check out tacticalconsiderations.com. Go to that first link in the description. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn the bell notification icons on, give the video a like if you were into any of that stuff. And of course, if you are subscribed, double check because there's been some weird things going on. And of course, leave me a comment about anything you have questions or comments about. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I will see you guys on the next one.